to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. October 6, 2021. Still got 35 minutes left in the trading session with the S&Ps up some seven handles. It's been an absolutely just wild trading session. I mean, overnight low, all touching down to 42.73. Right now, just off some of the highs of the session. Tell you what, this evening's video is going to differ quite a bit from what we do on a day-to-day uh, -day or week-to-week -week basis. We're going to talk a little bit about strategy this evening, specifically because, uh, well, with this kind of volatility, people are getting ripped apart. So let's get down to business. We're going to discuss how to go out and how to buy the dip and not necessarily get crushed if we're just purely wrong on directional bias. By the way, the opposing is also true. If uh, if you're not necessarily a, uh, a dip buyer out there, how can we go out there and actually fade the market, that is take a short position, and uh, again, not get our head taken off if we are uh, wrong with our directional bias. All right, so let's, uh, let's get down to business. I'll give you kind of a brief market update and you know, some of the reasoning behind why we're covering this specifically on, uh, on this evening session, first and foremost. As I said, it's been an absolute roller coaster ride in the S&Ps, and I'm not just talking about this evening. So as I said, the S&Ps right now are up nine after being all the way down to, uh, yeah, you guessed it, 42.73. When I call it a roller coaster ride, though, forget about some of the trade action. You know, oh, we bid back up. I should have, I should have bought the dip. I mean, this marketplace is literally training people to just come on, come on, come out there, buy the dip. And, you know, then they slam you and then, oh, come on, do it again. I mean, literally the bell goes off in the morning. You feel like Pavlov's dog that should actually step out and take risk. I'm going to show you what I mean, though, by a roller coaster of a marketplace. I'm actually going to open up the S&P futures to a 30 day one hour. Yeah. How does that grab you? When I talk a little bit about a roller coaster of a marketplace, I think that this uh, justifies just that. So we get taken lower and then of course we bid back up and get taken back lower and then we bid back up and get taken down lower and then, oh, I mean, we're right back there. Uh, how amusing is that marketplace? By the way, we just uh, covered the spectrum, if you will, of uh, pretty much well, just beyond one week of trade and uh, it gets better over time again. The one aspect though of this, and this is something that really kind of resonates with me, is that the overall trend now for a month right back here that was effectively the all-time high and that all-time high was actually hit in very early september the overall trend has been to the downside but it hasn't been really that dramatic if you will of a sell-off at least not as dramatic as well, if you looked at the nasdaq the nasdaq also kind of peaking out but the nasdaq peaked out at 15,700 and change it's now at uh, what 14,700 and change it lost almost 1,000 points, mm, almost to the penny over here. Anyway, with uh, with that, so we've got a little bit of a trend lower. Now, the reason I wanted to cover this, you know, there's so many people that just want to go out there, they want to buy the dip, and they show up every single day, especially in products like NVIDIA. And I just want to bring up NVIDIA because NVIDIA has also been kind of, uh, you know, kind of retrenching, possibly getting a bid under it. And every day, I tell you what, I watch NVIDIA right into the cash open, and I watch, you know, traders come out and look at the number of calls traded versus number of puts. And and again, right here is like the impetus for me uh, discussing this here, but uh, the number of calls traded versus puts, it's phenomenal. I mean, this is just heavy, heavy retail trade. The interesting irony is even with today and the marketplace is up in NVIDIA very slightly today, this is actually well below the, uh, the daily volume. So what the sizzle index means, if you're on uh, thinkorswim, you don't have to be on thinkorswim, but what the sizzle index means, it's today's option volume versus the previous five days option volume. So if it says like 0.83, that basically means that this product, NVIDIA, has traded 83% of the normal daily volume versus the previous five trading sessions. Anyway, so you can see it's a little bit light, but um, a lot of retail trade in here. <clears throat> and what a lot of you know traders do is they go out there, they open up the option chain in the morning, and they just literally start just buying calls. And they buy calls. In fact, some people even put in market orders before the open, which is it's just hideous. Okay, I just I stress to you right now, just don't do it. If you're using market orders 
before the market even opens. You know, you might get a little bid under the marketplace, but uh, for the most part, think about how much edge you're giving up, just the bid offer spread. You know, if you go out and play a game and every time you play the game, you give up five or $10 of edge, like how do you expect to make money in the longer duration? Again, you know, I come from a market making background and I look at stuff like this, I go, oh, please just don't, don't use those market orders. Don't do it. All right, so with NVIDIA, how can we actually go out there and buy a little bit of a dip over here and not get crushed? One of the first things is earnings. So earnings is something that uh, for the time being, unless you have some decent experience, avoid it. Just avoid some of the earnings announcements. You know, and there's a lot of earnings coming. If you look at uh, some of the, you know, uh, well, some of the financials, some of the financials are going to kick off earnings. I mean, this is right around the corner. Take a look at stuff like Goldman Sachs. All right, earnings season going to be in uh, full swing. And that becomes just a pure, you know, outright gamble over there. But stuff like NVIDIA, if you think NVIDIA is going to pop to the upside, so I could use two days, I could use nine days, I can use 16 days, but in the very near term, again, in the very near term, don't get cute. Go out there and actually use, you know, some shorter duration options. When I talk about like buying the dip, use spreads. Now, a lot of people, they don't like to use spreads. Why? Because spreads, if you will, limit how much you can make. I mean, this is not like YOLO. I mean, so spreads limit how much you can make, but nevertheless, they also limit some of the, uh, you know, impending losses that you could take. So in this particular case, I got a $5 wide spread for a $2.30 debit. And when you look at this, you think to yourself, well, what, what, what am I trying to do over here? Okay. In effect, okay. In effect, if you go out there and buy a spread, let's let's just put this, you know, in, in kind of common sense. If I paid two fifty for this trade, the most I could actually make on it is two fifty, right? Because it's a five dollar wide spread. You can't make more than five dollars on a five dollar wide spread. So why would I ever want to risk two fifty to be able to make two fifty? And the answer is the spread can actually kind of be held through thick or thin. You can even hold the spread, of course, overnight. Um, but the nice thing is the spread makes you kind of immune to many of the risks. Okay? that just tear traders apart. When I say it, it makes you immune to many of the risks, all right? what am I actually referencing? Okay, For the most part, when you get into a spread, and a lot of people don't think about this, but you could talk about like gamma risk. If you don't know what gamma risk is, that's fine, but you're basically buying three cents a gamma and turning around and selling three cents a gamma. So it negates any gamma risk. Okay, What else does it negate? If we actually looked over it, what we term theta, theta is daily whittling down of an option's value. That's decay, right? Option decay. So if we actually looked at this and said, well, buying the uh, the 205s and then selling the 210s, well, that pretty much negates most of the theta decay. And then, of course, let's talk about Vega. Vega is an option sensitivity to changes in implied volatility. I'm very sensitive to my implied volatility. But if I'm buying the 205s and selling the 210s, it also negates Vega. So what is really a spread? Again, I know that we might not necessarily love the risk reward. What is a spread? A spread is the purest form of taking a directional bias, okay, with knocking away all the risks that just hammer retail clients in this business. So all I'm trying to do on this particular session, this evening's video here, is just give you a little strategy kind of pep talk. This is kind of what we term an in-out spread. Now, for those of you that are a little bit more experienced, you've been on the Theo Trade site, we have some wildly detailed criteria, that is specifics. When should we do the spread? How many weeks out? What should be the percentage of returns? All of it's covered inside of Theo Trade. But again, please, okay, I implore you, after 23 years in this business, 15 of which, of course, I, you know, worked at Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade, you know, I've been talking about spreads to millions, literally millions of traders, and the spread will keep you intact, the spread will keep you alive, and moreover, like, you could be dead wrong, you know, tomorrow, you could buy the spread today, be dead wrong tomorrow, you know, three, four days out from now, even maybe Monday or Tuesday next week, the market bids back up and you're gold, Jerry, gold. And that's one of the things you have to understand about the spread. Now, of course, this is actually a bullish spread. This is, you know, a bull call spread, but uh, better known as just, you know, an in-out spread. Maybe you want to look at something like the energy sector. I mean, the energy sector has been in a straight tear to the upside. Forget about the chart side of it, though. Let's not even worry about charts. This is volatility, man. And in volatility, you know what you get in volatility? In volatility, you get a roller coaster ride. And that's all I could ask for. Because in that roller coaster ride, maybe I take a long position, maybe I take a short position. What's the short position look like? Here's the XLE. In the XLE, look, buying the uh, 56, selling the 54. Okay. I actually originally put this spread on for about 99 cents. But again, I'm just showing you, you know, some ideas. Uh, for uh, for a few trades that you have, you can see again there's some size trading in here. Of course, that's that's us. So 
again, whether you want to be long, whether you want to be short, one of the things, again, I implore you to do is to use spreads to mitigate risk because in a marketplace like this where everybody has been just, you know, trained, I must buy dips. And if you have been buying dips, you might start to look at the marketplace and think to yourself, hey, wait a second. This has been unequivocally a downtrend, and it's been a downtrend now for precisely one month. And in this downtrend over here, if you're buying dips, sure, you had a couple of good days, but you're getting taken apart, and you're going to systematically continue to get taken apart. Use spreads. The last thing I'll say in that front is, hey, it's also okay to take some short positions. That is, instead of using calls, use puts. You know, when you start to look at a lot of the quote-unquote retail trading products, you'll notice one aspect. A lot of calls trade. A lot of calls trade here. Okay. You look at stuff like Facebook, right? Look at the number of calls trading at Facebook. It's crazy. Look at something like Apple. Who do you think's trading all these calls? All right. You know, it's some kid down in his mom's basement that's uh, it's on Robin Hood. I'm just picking on you a little bit over here. But the point I'm trying to make with that, it's okay to actually trade puts. You know, you look at some of the professional level products, you start looking at stuff like spiders. You notice like the spiders trade more puts. You want to go to the professional level product, the mother of all products, which is the SPX. Take a look at the number of puts trading in the SPX. It exceeds the number of calls. Again, there's two sides to a marketplace over here. And again, bouncing around a lot. One thing I'll keep you, uh, you know, in mind for the remainder of the week. It's kind of uh, ironic, but we've been all over the place this week. All over the place. We had an $89 expected move. Okay, $89 expected move. And uh, yet... On the week right now, I'll tell you where we are. We're right here. We are, for the most part, massively unchanged in the week. Nevertheless, expect a lot more volatility, okay? What do you got to do? You got to mitigate risk when and where you can. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.